Hello, this is Brian Lyles, and welcome to Smarticus University. And our class today is RSpec 103, Organizing with RSpec. Let's start with some reader feedback from my last screencast. So I will go ahead and load up TextMate. One of the things that was mentioned in the comments from my last screencast is that I was I was not using a matcher or one of one of the built-in RSpec matchers where I should have been. And actually a good example would be right here. There is a better way to do this and I will show you doing it the RSpec way this time. What happens is is that I do these in real time and sometimes I overlook or even forget. So what I have here is I'm testing for the length and I'm also and then I'm testing to see that the length has changed. What I can do is I can perform the operation in a lambda block. And then what I can do like I say should change SQ and what should change is the length by 1. And if you if you'll see I save this and I go spec smartyq spec.rb all my tests still pass so I'll go through and I will change I will change another couple of these as well and I'll change this one so I'll just go lambda sq.pop should change sq comma length by negative one and it does make for much cleaner spec and let's just go through here and make sure that I'm not doing this anymore and as it, it appears that I am not doing this anymore so thanks for that comment and another comment that I received is that the Smarty Q isn't thread safe. Well, you know what? It isn't thread safe, and it really isn't meant to be. Um, I personally wouldn't use this in any kind of code that I make professionally. Um, I'm only using this as a learning tool, and I really hope that people um, don't use this for anything other than a learning tool. So, on to our lesson for today. First thing I want to do is I want to organize my project directory. I'm just having a folder with two files, one is my implementation, one is my spec, just doesn't sit well with me. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some directory organization here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my library stuff to lib. And I am going to move my spec to spec directory. Um, that introduces a little problem here. Of course, when I try to spec my smarty Q, it's going to say, hey, I don't know where this implement this smarty Q thing is in the require line. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to change our require line to, to compensate for where we move the files. So the first thing we'll do is we will do we will change the require line to lib smarty q. There we go. And we'll go back to running our oops, let me see if that's right. There. I think I typed the wrong name there. So let's try this again. Spec, spec slash uh oh. Oh, you know something? Always make sure and this happens to me all the time. Q is Q U E U E. I damn the English language for that. So now it'll work. Uh 
Um, and actually, I didn't run the spec. I didn't run my specs. So I made the change earlier, and I actually had a typo. So let's go ahead and fix that typo. And this is something else I do. Lambda. Damn the English language. And now I've somewhat organized my specs a little bit better. But, you know, this is not good enough. I, I like rake. Um, I think it's the Ruby way. So let's go ahead and create a rake file for running our specs as well. So I'll go down here and I'll create a new file. And I will rename the file to make it rake file. And in my rake file, um, we're going to we're going to run our specs from this rake file, so we can just do rake spec. Actually, I think that looks a lot better. I think rake spec looks a lot better than spec. And another reason I like this is because um, let's, if I happen to include another spec, I don't want to have to remember all the names of my specs. I just want to run the whole I just want to hold run the whole suite at one time. So let's go in here and set up our rake file for running specs. So the first thing we want to do is require Ruby gems because I have all this installed with Ruby gems. And then I'll require rake. And require I think I need to require a spec. And I also want to require this rake spec task. And what this task does, it's a pre-written task for you. What it does is it will run all the tasks in a directory. So we'll create our new task now. And we'll just call it run specs. And we'll go spec. We'll call this this um, pre-baked spec task or pre-baked rake task. And accept a block. And we'll say spec files equals file list. And then we'll pass it our spec directory. And we'll say any directory under there and any file that ends with spec. We love conventions. And then our ops, and we'll put our ops in a separate file that we'll create right now. And instead of just, I think it's easier to do it this way. It makes sense to me. So we'll put all of our spec options in this file called spec slash spec ops. And we'll go ahead and create that file right now as well. And our spec ops, let's see, I like color. And we want it to format, and we want the format to be progress. And you're noticing that, um, and I'll sh you'll notice that I'm putting these on one per line. That's how the spec ops work. And our timeout is 20, and we want we want to show diffs. So if you're running this from the command line, it would really look like color, format, progress, timeout, 20, dash, diff. But since we're doing it in this format, we put them on one per line. So now what we can do is instead of doing that, we now can run rake spec. And it runs all our specs, and now they're in color as well. Um, You'll notice that if you're familiar with Rails, that I didn't define a default task. I don't like the default task. I, I like to be really explicit about what I'm doing. And rake spec actually gives me, it's my intention is that I'm specking. So um, you can add a default task if you wish. I choose not to. The next thing I want to talk about is ZenTest. And it's made by Brian Davis, aka ZenSpider, from Seattle RB. Uh, this is going to be one of the greatest tools in your arsenal and what it allows you to do is it it has a tool called auto test which will constantly run your test whenever a file when it detects the file has changed so let's go ahead and run it right now um, I'm using Zen test 361 so if you want to follow along that's what I'm using so all you do is you run auto test and what it did when it started up is it ran my specs so let's pull this over here a little bit and let's pull this down here a little bit and you'll see what what happens so I'm not going to even make a change to my spec file but I'm going to save and if you notice on the left it redid it retested the same thing with my implementation whenever I make a change it retests so let's say if I go ahead and I break my 
I break my implementation. And you'll notice it prints out every single error that failed. So let's go ahead and read. And now I'm fixing my implementation and it retests. This is this is awesome. Um, everybody should love this. So I'm adding this in there today. And I think that's it for right now. Uh, I just wanted to keep this short. And this was RSpec 103, Organization with RSpec. Um, stay tuned for the next SmartyCast, which will be soon. It'll be 104, and it will probably be a short one on more organization with RSpec. Thanks.